Hello again, and welcome once again to the PM Talk Show. This is Pat Marsh, your host, and we have been doing a series on different people, different organizations who want to give back some of their time and, and their talents to our young people in the Tashboa Parish School System. We have with us today Miss Mercy Upolo. She's from California by way of New Orleans and by way of Baton Rouge, and she's also with NBC Universal, or she's been with NBC Universal Opposite Worlds, and that's a very commendable place to be in. Welcome to our show today. How are well, you doing? thank you. Thank Good. you for having me. I'm so Good. thrilled. We're very glad that you're taking your time before you go back to the West Coast to tell us a little bit about who you are, and I'm sure we can use your talents in Tashboa Parish with a lot of our young people who aspire to do a lot of positive things yet don't know the direction to go into. So we're going to give the camera to you and let you talk about yourself and let us know who you are and what you do. Well, thank you. First off, again, I, I'm so thrilled to be here. I'm, I'm so humbled that you gave me this opportunity. Thank you. But um, my name is Mercy Polo. Mm -hmm. I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, and I am someone since childhood has always loved arts. Mm -hmm. I've been enthralled in writing and reading and, and painting um, and I've been in theater and acting since I was little. One of my first plays, which my parents will tell you about, was Rock and Robin. So um, I just recently had the wonderful opportunity of being a contestant on okay. NBC Universal's Opposite Worlds. Mm -hmm. It was broadcasted on the Sci-Fi Network okay. and through that exposure I'm now having the opportunity to continue to motivational speak to, uh, to the youth, which is important to me but also be able to pursue entertainment, okay. um, hosting, acting, and TV, film, uh, commercials, do voiceover work, uh, MC work, so just the whole okay. gamut, and I'm very, very uh, blessed to, to be here. Okay. You are diverse in an educational setting, so how would you relate that message to students who may be like self-esteem or who feel like, who would feel like education or a lot of it is not good for them? How would you convince them otherwise? I think what's important in life is to be able to truly relate to someone else is to tell your story. Because mm -hmm. as a listener, you may hear something that you resonate with. So yeah. what I've been able to do when I uh, do public speaking, which I love, is tell my story. And I tell kids out there, look, I came to this country when I was very young and my family was given a directive either learn English, you know, in time or be held back in school. And both of my parents are Dr. Fawn Upolo, Dr. Victor Upolo, strong proponents of education, which mm -hmm. they've instilled in myself and my brother Kayway since a very young age. And we work together as a family and I learned English very quickly. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I was able to be en enriched year after year and um, excel academically through all of my studies. And I graduated with honors from Baton Rouge Magnet High School, okay. um, which I'm sure the wonderful people in Tangible Hope Parish are aware of, how yes. you know how you know, uh, strong that school is academically, and um, just let the, s the youth out there know that any dream that you have, you can attain it. You just need to know that education is what's going to get you there, and right. be focused and know that there's a lot of support out there for you, and never be afraid to reach out to your community to give you that support you need, and um, I would also let them know because of my experience at, at Baton Rouge Magnet High School, I attended a wonderful HBCU mm -hmm. in the city of Baton Rouge, Southern University, okay. and I graduated with honors there as well. Okay. And I was able to, um, as soon as I graduated, work for ExxonMobil. So okay. you, any dream you have, you can attain it. Education is what's going to get you there, and I always tell the kids that when I talk to them. Okay. Um, how often do you do motivational speaking now? It's something that I haven't been able to do as much as I wanted to, but having this opportunity on an NBC show right. um, has really propelled my exposure to heights that I know only God has been able to create. So um, now I can really do it, and I'm just so thrilled to be able to start getting out there and talking to the kids and having my voice be heard and allowing young uh, youth, especially African-American youth, know mm -hmm. that they have uh, young people that they can also look up to as well. Because right. we are blessed to have so many great um, individuals such as yourself and Oprah and, and Shonda Rhimes and, and Sidney Poitier, so many people that I look up to. Um, but it's, it's an amazing experience to know that someone who's just very, very close to where you are mm -hmm. 
you you have that you can kind of use as a role model as well. Right, and it's that res that message that you would give as a young person would resonate, I think, better coming from you in a way than it would be for me because of my age. Kids tend to relate more to each other. Is that right? I think kids look up to um, so many wonderful role models, mm -hmm. but it's something about someone who's right where you are right. that just makes you even more, makes you feel even more special. Right. And, and another thing that allows me to tell my story um, is I tell students that even though I was an undergrad and I was taking the maximum credit hours um, mm -hmm. and working as well in college, I wanted to give back and it was so important for me to give back. So I started my own scholarship, okay. the Mercy Polar Scholarship. Um, so for a year, I saved money every month and reached out to my mom and she partnered with me and donated to as, as well. Mm -hmm. And right before I graduated, I went to my dean of the College of Business, Dean Andrews at the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, sir, I really want to give back. I want to have a legacy for the students here at Southern University, especially the College of Business. And I have money that I saved up. I want to be able to um, provide another student here with the opportunity to not only get the textbooks that they need mm -hmm. um, or you know the housing that they need, can you allow me to do this? And he was so supportive. And I actually went through the whole process. I, su I submitted the, um, the publication to the entire university. I had an essay question. I had them write an essay. I read every single essay, which I loved, because I love reading and writing. And then I objectively picked a student by the name of Ashley Forbes, who was my first recipient. So, okay. um, and then I also donated money to Southeastern uh, Lab School, which my mom was the director of at the time, to help two students attend one of her many wonderful excursions <laughs> that the students loved. Um, so it was, it's something I love doing. Doing something like your mom did all the time, would you agree that it helps to encourage students to want to do more, to get to that point of where they want to be in life? Oh, ex I would, I totally concur. I mean, if it wasn't for my parents being such strong role models and being mm -hmm. so driven and such amazing proponents of not just education but always striving for excellence in anything that you do. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was Martin Luther King that said you do the best that you can in anything that you do. If you're a street sweeper, you'd be the best right. street sweeper exactly. on God's green earth. So that's something that my parents instilled in me as well. So I think it's important when you see someone who's reached such great heights like Michelle Obama and Barack Obama, as a young person, mm -hmm. you're excited. You, you know that there's something greater in your life if mm -hmm. you keep reaching for your goals. So um, I, I love it. Any time that I see strong role models, it makes me so happy. Okay. Your scholarship that you have, that's still in place now, right? Yes, it's okay. still in place. What are the pre prerequisites for getting one? Oh, the prerequisites are just, um, it would be filling out the essay that mm -hmm. I, the questions that I come up with, and I, I love reading every single one of them. Um, I always try and relate it to something that's going on in the world. My, um, my essay question for my first uh, for my, my first recipient was, now that we have our first black president, what, um, what opportunities do you feel that he will now um, bring to the youth here at mm -hmm. Southern University? And so it was amazing to read all of the thoughts and ideas that were coming from my, my colleagues at the time. So just the prerequisites are someone who is having at least a 2.5, mm -hmm. and um, currently it's for undergrads at colleges. Mm -hmm. But I definitely, like I said, given back to South uh, Eastern Lab School, I do also provide scholarships to the schools here. And I want to continue to be a part of Tangible Hill Parish and give back to this parish. Um, but for my specific scholarship, it's filling out the essay and having at least 2.5. Okay. Okay. Well, I can pass that information oh, well, thank on. thank you. By way of the video, <laughs> <laughs> I can send the link to a lot of principals in the schools here. Oh, good. And that way you'll get that exposure and they can expose it to the kids. We have a lot of great kids oh, yes. in Tangible Hall Parish and because of the economy there are so many who want to do but don't have the funds to do so just maybe one will be fortunate or blessed enough to become a part of your scholarship and it'll open up many other doors for them because the goal of the NAACP is to see that every child achieves something yes. whether it's on a university level, whether it's on a VOTEC level, but you find more kids now who are wanting to become the doctors, the lawyers, the nurses, the engineers, all of the professionals, and then you have some who wants just a good solid skill that will pay them a good salary. Yes. And that's becoming available now. Uh, 
another thing I think you're motivationally speaking and we want to do something to see if we can get you back at one of the schools. Oh, I would love it. One of the schools and maybe have Southeastern host it for us so that uh, there will be room for a lot of kids from across the parish to come just to hear you so that you can encourage them. Um, what are your ultimate goals for the future? My ultimate goals for the future, I want to be a household name in such a positive light. Um, okay. it's, one thing, it's one thing to know that having your driving force is God every single day, you know that he's gonna make a way for you. Mm -hmm. And when you can come home with my family, Miss Pat, and talk to my mom and dad, and they'll tell you, since I was five, I have loved theater. So it's something that's always been a passion in my heart, but I also focus on academics mm -hmm. very, very much. And that's why, like I said, magnet schools are so important to me, because they have that strong balance of mm -hmm. arts and academics. So right now, I just want to follow the dream that I've had since I was little and get into entertainment. And I want to be a household name for y so many people out there who watch me on TV, film, and movies and just say, she is wonderful. Okay. I want to be able to work with such amazing producers as Shonda Rhimes for Scandal and, mm -hmm. and, and um, Andy Cohen and Ta Tyler Perry. I would love someday to be able to sit down with Oprah. Um, there's so many people out there that I would love the opportunity to work with. So my goal God willing, is to be a, a household name for entertainment in such a credible form that I'm able to do what Lupita did uh, a few days ago and walk home with an Oscar. Okay. Okay, well, we're going for a break right now, and this is so interesting, and we want you to send this video to Tyler and to Oprah, because <laughs> I'm sure you have the contacts to do so. But we're going for a break now, and we'll be right back with part two.